Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jeff Stryker. I'm a Senior Managing Director with Edgemore Infrastructure and Real Estate. And on behalf of the whole team, we're honored to have you here today to celebrate for us what's a really exciting milestone. Normally, when we would hit a milestone like this, we'd have a big celebration. We'd have lots of people here today um, bring our project partners and our community partners and have a true celebration. But today, as we all know, these are not normal times. And so in the spirit of safety, we've chosen uh, to keep our numbers at an absolute minimum, but that doesn't diminish the great news that we're about to share with you. First, uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge Councilman O'Neill. Thank you for coming in the back. Um, and we will hear from Mayor Lucas here in a couple of minutes. Um, we also have, and again, as we've limited attendance, we have our partners with Clark White's Clarkson, Mark Goodwin, standing over there. He'll come up and speak in a moment. And of course, our partners from PMG, the owner's rep, and the aviation department, and Pat Klein will come up and speak in a few moments. Three years ago, when we were selected for this project uh, to build the new terminal at Kansas City Airport, we made a commitment to all of Kansas City that this project would be transformational for the city, especially for minority and women-owned businesses. Our team set significantly high goals for minority and women business participation, and we are on track to meet those goals. I'm proud to announce today that we've achieved a significant milestone. We've added more than 100 minority and women-owned businesses working on the project to build KCI. We are 100 strong and still growing. We know of no other project that has created this level of opportunity and capacity building for minority and women-owned businesses in Kansas City. From the outset, we recognized how important it would be to provide programs and support to minority and women-owned firms in order to give them the tools and the training to build capacity to position their companies not only for su success on this job, but future success. For example, our executive style MBA program that's free of charge that we offer to local, small, veteran, and minority and women-owned businesses. It's our strategic partnership program. We've graduated 84 companies to date over the first three classes. We've just launched our fourth class in the month of September, and we'll continue to provide this program to businesses throughout the life of the project. I'm proud to say that 12 of the companies that have completed the class have also been awarded contracts, and some of the folks you see behind me here today are proud SPP graduates as well as recipients of winning work. Another barrier for minority and, and women businesses is cash flow. Such a large project and in the construction industry from the time it takes for us to get paid to pay the contractor to pay subcontractors, there's often a big lag in payments that go to subs that can hurt businesses and we wanted to eliminate that barrier. So we implemented a pay without delay program. We pay minority and women owned businesses within 14 days after their work is completed to make sure that we are not hurting any business and helping them grow and build capacity. Another program that we've set up is to help firms get access to capital. We have a wonderful partnership with Lead Bank where we offer a low interest loan program and uh, firms can apply to uh, get loans or lines of credit to use to help either acquire equipment or working capital. I'm pleased to report that Lead Bank is uh, to date provided over $4 million of loans to businesses working on the project. As I said, a milestone like this would not be possible without cooperative partners and a project of this size in the airport has so many. And with that, uh, if you please join me in a round of applause as I introduce Mayor Lucas, who's been a friend to the project and to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And watch your step. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, it is uh, such an honor to be with all of you. One thing I wanted to note uh, as we started, while we live in very interesting times, uh, I want to start with acknowledging a group that doesn't get acknowledgement nearly enough, and that are the women and men who work for the Kansas City Aviation Department, who every day throughout the politics of new airport terminals and everything under the sun, every issue, do hard work. I see some of you here today. I thank you for what you do. I thank you, Mr. Klein, for running a good department. And I thank all of those who work for Kansas City each and every day. I also want to give a, a shout out to my committee colleague, Kevin O'Neill. I've enjoyed working with him, frankly, even before we were working together. I know that he, so many of us on the city council and as mayor, have recognized that the goal for this project from day one was to be transformative. And transformative didn't just mean a new airport terminal that would be world-class, unique, one of the greatest in our country, but also transformative in how we support businesses, how we support women and minority-owned businesses, and frankly, how we support 
women and minorities and so many folks that are trying to get good, solid, outstanding work like you can see on this airport project. To take us back into time in a magical world I call 2017, you may all remember that back then we used to spend a little more time closer together physically, but we were having a really big and significant discussion about the KCI airport as a city, as a city council, frankly as all of us. And a big part of the reason that the voters approved this airport project by such a high margin was the difference that it could make for Kansas City and our region. What you are seeing today are promises kept. Promises kept to help support new businesses or existing businesses grow. Promises kept to make sure that when we look at the workforce that the city has to offer for the next big project, because your press people, I'll just say, whether it be a baseball stadium or anything under the sun, that next big project will say, look at all of the opportunities, all of the businesses, all of the workforce, all of the laborers making prevailing wage, all of the people who have a chance to work on this project and to make Kansas City continue to grow. That's what this is about. It's about businesses, it's about families, it's about building communities. And I will say this, we spend a lot of time right now, perhaps necessarily so, in America talking about how we can solve big, seemingly existential problems. Crime, race relations, housing, poverty, health care. Well, the real way you solve it is with good jobs and good businesses and good people like those who are standing behind me today who've invested in making sure that there are opportunities not just for themselves and often not for themselves, but for those who work with them, those who work for them, and those who will be running their business as well into the future. That's what this KCI Airport project is about. That's what folks like Jeff Stryker have spent hours and hours pursuing. And although I know sometimes the controversies, the conflicts, the debates get all the attention, every now and then it's good to say, job well done. Well, I say job well done to you, Mr. Stryker. Job well done to our Director of Aviation, our Director of Human Relations, Philip Yelder, and particularly, job well done to so many of these businesses. We have 100 now. We look forward to having even more. And I'll be proud, not only when we open the airport, new airport terminal, Justin Meyer always reminds me, just the terminal. But when we open the new airport terminal, I'll be even prouder though, when six months from then, one year from then, even further we're saying we are ready for the next outstanding, exceptional project in Kansas City. And we don't have to fight for hours and hours and months and months to say, will people from my community be included? Will people from a different community be included? We'll look to the KCI project as a template, not just for Kansas City and the region, but I think nationally for how you can build an outstanding project, how you can be inclusive, and frankly, how Kansas City gets things done. Thank you all so much, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You very well said, and appreciate the, the recognition of what this will do for the community, not only on this project, but for generations to come. As I said earlier, um, one of our key goals was setting high goals in that partnership with the city. Um, and of course, we've had a great relationship with Mr. Yelder and the HRD department in helping us achieve our goals and understand the, the opportunities out there and the businesses that we could partner with. Um, I'd like to now introduce Mark Goodwin. Mark is the head of the Clark White's construction, uh, Clarkson Construction Joint Venture Design Build in the airport. Mark? I wish I could thank everyone. There's too many individuals and companies and organizations to thank them all, but there are two groups that today we want to provide some some acknowledgement and some thank you to uh, and the mayor and and Jeff also mentioned uh, the first of which is the human relations department for uh, the city of Kansas City. Mr. Yelder's group uh, at HRD has been very instrumental in uh, the success that our team has had thus far. A great team uh, working partnership uh, with HRD that we really couldn't have gotten here without uh, that that successful relationship. The other group that I want to thank and acknowledge is all of our uh, subcontracting community. So uh, CWC has 30 contracts with prime subcontractors and MWBE subcontractors, uh, several of which are here today. But it's our entire subcontracting community that allows us to achieve the percentages, the goals, and the numbers of firms uh, that bring us to the 100. So it's our entire subcontractor uh, partnership that we really couldn't uh, be here today without. So I thank them for their commitment and their embracement of the goals that our team has had, and they continue to reinforce that. 
So today we are also sharing that we've contracted over $220 million to certified MNWBE firms. And that includes uh, construction and professional services. So we're very proud of that. Uh, that's out of approximately $950 million uh, to be subcontracted in total. Uh, so we still have uh, our jobs not done. You know, we, on top of that 220, we have about $50 million that's been awarded that we're working with the subcontractors to get their letters of intent and get them approved in the HRD system. So right now that's 220 in the HRD system with 50 more uh, of contracts to come. As far as further procurements, we have about $60 million uh, yet to procure. We've got another bid package coming out in about two weeks, so there's still certainly uh, several opportunities for firms to, to join and, and for this 100 to increase them further. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fatima Parrish. I'm the owner of Parrish & Sons Construction. I'm excited, extremely excited to stand here before you today to represent the 100 minority women and uh, minority women and business owners from here in Kansas City that are involved in the department of uh, the development of the uh, design and construction in the largest single infrastructure project here in Kansas City history. I'm proud to bring my firm's experience and expertise as it relates to excavation and grading. We are here supporting the project with the demolition and hauling of the pavement of the old International Circle and Bogota Circle. In addition to demolition of several taxiways, the taxiway lower and upper parking lots, I am proud to say that I founded Parrish & Sons Construction basically to build a legacy business for my four boys. I am thankful for the opportunities for growth that I've been afforded throughout the Kansas City Strategic Partnership. And during that time on the new terminal project. Continuously I applied the skills gained while in the Kansas City Strategic Partnership Program that include accounting, bid estimating, and safety planning. I really appreciate the extra benefit of networking with other small businesses such as Heartline Construction and other women-owned businesses in the class. With 20 years of IT management, I took on the challenge of starting my own company. I chose to retool myself and submerge myself in the construction industry to do what it takes to successfully run any business because like in construction and like in IT, there are similar, there are similar traits with the project management life cycle. And in that project development life cycle, you have those things that you, know, you need to build any business, which is accounting which is HR, which is legal, all of the back office support things that delineate us from a larger company to uh, what is considered a mom and pop or two guys in a truck. And so we chose to rise to the occasion, retool, develop a strong safety program, and make sure that we continue to do everything with a safety first mindset. My contract on the new KCI terminal project is the second largest my firm has been awarded to date and it has been extremely transformative for my company. I truly value being a part of providing in employment to the city of Kansas City, right in this community where I grew up. I wanna thank my husband Clark, my father Carl for his entrepreneurial spirit that I inherited, and I'd also like to thank the Edgemore team, Clark White Clarkson, for investing in my business. And I'd like to say, hey guys, I'm gonna make you all proud. My team is thrilled to play a role in such a significant project in our city's history and honored to be one of more than 100 strong Kansas City small businesses helping make the terminal take flight onward and upward. Right. Today I want to start off with five words, five words, on time and on budget. All right, on time and on budget. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Build KCI, the single largest infrastructure project in Kansas City's history at a million square feet. The new terminal of Kansas City Airport will, will be just that. The new terminal will have a profound and lasting impact on the region in the form of jobs, opportunities for local and small businesses, and a first-class traveler experience for the user. 39 gates with the ability to expand up to 50. The project includes 6,000 parking spaces right across from the terminal, along with landslide and airside improvements. 
The new terminal will support more efficient airline operations and allow airport users the convenience of modern terminal with updated technology, amenities, close parking, spacious gate areas, and ample food and beverages. We expo expect to open on time in March of 2023 for the NFL draft, so we'll have a new world-class front door uh, for our world-class city. Much of this is a direct result of the fine minority and women-owned businesses whose employees work hard day in and day out. Day out, my hat goes off to them and all the workers who work here every day for a fabulous new facility and for Kansas City. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so thank you, Pat. I appreciate the, the words. Um, as we close out the program today, I just wanted to remind folks uh, from the media that, as Mark mentioned, the members of the MWB firm, as well as the Edgemore and CWC team, and hopefully the mayor and the councilman will be around to answer some questions for you about what it's like to have worked on the project so far and, and how their businesses have um, benefited. Um, as we've all said, we're extremely proud of the diverse group of project partners who have been instrumental in every aspect of the new terminal project to KCI, whether that's from design, demolition, moving into construction, and all the supporting roles along the way. We just have a fantastic group of minority and women-owned businesses joining our team. I think we, they deserve another round of applause. Thank all of you. Um, we're grateful for their contributions, dedication, and commitment to making this project a success. To every one of them, we are 100 strong and still growing. Thank you.